on the cusp of North and South America, we visit a country synonymous with a canal known as one of the wonders of the modern world. We explore this feat of engineering and the rainforest that straddles it, one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. A place where the flora and fauna of two continents meet, making it one of the most truly unique ecosystems on the planet. We explore one of the oldest continuous cities in the Americas with its modern and colonial charm. Sampling some of its delicious local cuisine. This is our trip to Panama, including Panama City and Canal. We continue after our brief trip to the USA, including Florida and New York. So we're here in Panama City, which is actually the largest city in Central America. So we're basically on the cusp of North America and South America right here. And we're actually in the Casco Viejo region, which is the old city. And the reason why I like to stay here is because of this classic uh, colonial Spanish feel. Started the following morning to the Panama Canal via the modern side of Panama City and its high-rise buildings. So we're about to do a cruise on the Chagros River, which supplies about 40% of the water, the fresh water that gets pumped into the locks on the Panama Canal. We're actually gonna cruise along and go to a place called Monkey Island, where we get to check out some wild monkeys. Now for Spanish conquistador, okay? This was part of the Cruces Trail. About 60% of the gold and silver that came out of South America, places like Chile, Bolivia, Peru, that Royal Fifth, that 20% of gold and silver that these conquistadors would find that would go to Spain ran on this river and through the jungles of Panama. The construction of the Panama Canal was one of the most monumental engineering feats of the 20th century. It began in the late 19th century under the leadership of the French, led by Ferdinand de Lesseps. However, due to financial difficulties and the high mortality rate among workers, the project was abandoned. It wasn't until the early 20th century that the United States took over the project, led by President Theodore Roosevelt. One of the key elements of the Panama Canal's construction was the creation of Gatun Lake, an artificial body of water formed by damming the Chagres River. The flooding of Gatun Lake began in 1913, effectively creating a massive reservoir that serves as a crucial part of the canal's lock system. This immense body of water not only provides a stable water supply for the operation of the canal, but also facilitates the movement of ships through the canal by acting as a buffer for the fluctuations in water levels caused by tidal changes in the adjacent oceans. The flooding of Gatun Lake isolated the higher hilltops, forming isolated islands which in effect trapped many native species, including primate species such as capuchin monkeys, tamarins, and one of the loudest land animals on earth. Oh 
howler monkeys, known for their distinctive loud calls that can be heard up to 5 kilometers or 3 miles away, are native to the forests of Central and South America. These arboreal primates primarily inhabit the canopy layer of tropical and subtropical forests, where they feed on leaves, fruits, and occasionally insects. The tiger heron, with its striking tiger-like markings and long neck, is a wading bird found in the wetlands and mangroves of Central and South America. Jeffroy's tamarin is recognized by its tuft ears and distinctive facial markings. These small primates exhibit strong social bonds, living in family groups and communicating through a variety of vocalizations and body language. Despite their diminutive size, Jeffroy's tamarins are skilled foragers feeding on fruits, insects, and small vertebrates while navigating the forest canopy with remarkable agility. The construction of the canal required overcoming immense challenges, including navigating through dense jungles, dealing with tropical diseases such as malaria and yellow fever, and managing the formidable geography of the Isthmus of Panama. Annually, the Panama Canal facilitates the transit of over 300 million tons of cargo, connecting the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean, making it a critical artery for global trade and commerce. So this area right here is known as Gamboa and this was known as the central area for the Americans when they were constructing the Panama Canal between 1903 and 1977. So this was their main headquarters. The people that lived here were known as Zonians because they lived within the US zone of Panama itself. And uh, in 1977, Jimmy Carter basically signed the treaty back to hand, well, the treaty to hand Panama or the Panama Canal to the Panamanian people. So it was a 22 year process in training them up and pretty much having them uh, take over the area. So in 1999, it became part of Panamanian territory for the very first time. So right now we're in Parque Nacional Soberania, which means Sovereignty National Park, and it was named after the sovereignty of uh, Panama for this region when they were given back in the country between 1977 and, and 1999. And the uh, national park is a part of this region that borderlines the Panama Canal. So there's about five or six different national parks in the area that borderline the canal. It's a very, very dense and biodiverse rainforest. In fact, it is the most biodiverse biodiverse place on earth which means more species of animals and plants here than anywhere else on earth. The reason for that is because we are basically on the cusp of two tectonic plates, the South American and North American tectonic plate. When they were connected about 10 million years ago due to volcanic activity in the area rising up the land between, we had animal species from both continents combining and joining here right in this spot. So in this area here, you'll find more animals per square kilometer than anywhere else on earth. In fact, there are more plant and tree species here in this area than in all of North America. And there are more bat species in this, just this region alone than all of Europe. And it's a country the size of the Czech Republic, essentially. So it's very, very biodiverse rainforest.
we've seen some really interesting species already. And one of the most interesting species we saw were the woodcutter ants, which for their body size can hold the most weight out of any animal species. And the woodcutter ants, they cut these leaves not to eat, but to actually create a fungus. So it will break down and create a fungus in their nest, and then they'll eat that fungus. And there are actually a lot of scientific studies at the moment studying that type of fungus because they say that it could lead towards some advances in medicine where they could create cures for all different sorts of ailments. So that's a really, really interesting thing about this area. The current trail we're on is called the Pipeline Trail. And the Pipeline Trail is created for oil pipelines in the lead up to World War II, or during World War II, I should say, because the Americans were afraid that both the Germans and the Japanese would come and bomb the region from either side of the canal. Of course, the canal was very important for naval passageways, so that was why it was a main target. So they created the pipeline here to transport oil from one side to the other in case the canal was attacked. Never was attacked, fortunately, but there were plans by both the Germans and the Japanese on either side of the canal to destroy the canal. High up in the trees, we spot a three-toed brown sloth. Despite its seemingly languid pace, the sloth's unique adaptation, such as specialized muscles and a low metabolic rate, enable it to thrive in its arboreal habitat. However, habitat loss and fragmentation pose significant threats to the survival of these gentle creatures, underscoring the importance of conservation efforts to protect their dwindling populations. So I don't think our timing could be more perfect. You could probably hear, or maybe even see, the rain outside right now. Uh, we just arrived back from our day tour. What did you think of the day tour, Miranda? I thought it was absolutely amazing. It was had better weather. It was perfect. Yeah, the weather was perfect. John, our guide, was absolutely amazing with his knowledge, so we have to give him a shout out. And also the company we, we went with. We believe it was called Panama, Panama Day Tours. It was the five hour combo, the uh, the cruise and Monkey Island cruise and Panama Canal tour, which was on Via Tour. It was one of the top rated on there. Um, highly recommend it. We saw tons of wildlife, including capuchin monkeys, and they were everywhere. Tamarind monkeys as well. Um, we saw the howler monkeys, you could hear them screeching. And one of the things I liked about the tour company that we went with is the fact that they don't actually lure in the animals by feeding them. Some of the other tour companies we saw were actually feeding them bananas, which is really, really bad for the monkeys. One, bananas don't actually come from this region, they're from the old world, so they're not a natural part of their diet. Two, they are genetically modified. Modern bananas are full of sugars, nothing like natural bananas anyway, so they're not great for animal digestive systems, and also they could give the monkeys diabetes or something. Um, and it stops the monkeys from foraging for their own food. So I actually respected that, and I saw in a lot of the reviews, there were, well not a lot, but some of the reviews, there were people complaining that they didn't have monkeys lured onto their boats, whereas the other companies did. I actually think it was quite a cool thing, and, and John explained that really, really well, so it's something I really respect. Now, the other thing we saw, which was cool, we didn't think we were going to see it, because up until the very, very end of the tour, we didn't see it at all, was an animal known as Perezoso, which is Spanish for lazy. So this is the sloth, the three-toed brown sloth that we saw today. It's one of the, I believe he said, three or four species of sloth they have here in Panama. And uh, the sloths, they are lazy, actually. They sleep between uh, 12 and 18 hours a day, so they're pretty much spending their whole time sleeping. Inside of their fur, John was explaining that they have a whole ecosystem of microbes and bugs and, and insects that live within their fur, so they're actually so slow that a lot of bugs would you know, just stay in there and rather than fly away. So it's kind of a really interesting species. But yeah, we got to see a sloth, which was really, really cool. So I enjoyed that. Miranda's getting into some of our food here. This is, we stopped at a, a uh, fruit market on the way back and grabbed some fresh juices. This one here is dragon fruit and lemon. This one here is pineapple, turmeric, and ginger. This is lime. Oh, lime, limon, yeah, that's right. Lemons and limes in Latin America are actually the other way around. Limon is lime and lima is lemon, so just so <laughs> people know. Fresh guacamole and pico de gallo, along with some, oh, some nacho chips right here as well. These are local 
artisanal nacho chips with uh, maiz negro, so black corn. So it's really interesting, last time I was here in Panama, I stayed here in the Casco Viejo region, which is the old town or the old city center. And most of the buildings look like these ones behind me here. They're all sort of run down buildings, but they've obviously spent a lot of money in the last nine years redoing this area here. And it's become quite a, a boutique sort of area. A lot of the restaurants and bars are really sort of top end. It's actually really, really pleasant to walk around, to be honest. So Casco Viejo is known as a very, very safe area, and a lot of that has to do with the police presence around the region. Uh, the reason why they have a lot of the police presence is because a lot of the political buildings are here, and it's a, a way of them sort of being able to fend off any potential political protests or riots and things like that. So a good way to know that you're in Casco Viejo is because of the red bricked roads that you see everywhere but on the border of Casco Viejo are some of the poorer neighborhoods of the city and uh, it doesn't take much to sort of wander off and when you get into some of those areas particularly in the nighttime you can find yourself in a little bit of trouble so a good rule of thumb is stick towards the red, yeah, red brick road I was gonna say yellow brick road and uh, it should be fine. up with newly made friends from our tour for dinner and drinks. After getting to know one another, we took turns showing off party tricks and secret talents at a rooftop bar with one of the best views of the city. Pretty awesome night out. We started off at uh, La Raña Dorada, which is the Golden Frog. It was a, a cerveceria or a, a brewery right here in Casco Viejo, the old part of Panama. The reason why we went there, not only are they renowned for having amazing beers and amazing atmosphere, but also as well, they actually give some of the proceeds and profits to preserving one of the native species here, the Golden Frog, from extinction. It actually is extinct in the wild, but some of the proceeds go towards keeping it uh, in captivity and keeping the breeding programs going while the fungus that actually led towards it, its extinction is dying out and once it has died out they are actually able to reintroduce the frog into the environment into the ecosystem so that's one of the cool things that they do I think that's pretty amazing and their beers were absolutely awesome we met up with some of the guys from our tour and then we later on went to Tantalo which is a rooftop bar here in Panama City and it has the most excellent views highly recommend getting there they have a later happy hour up until 7 p.m so we got half price cocktails up there and it was just a beautiful view of the city great food that's us So it's our last day here in Panama City and we're going to do a little bit of exploring. Now the original plan was for us to go out to the Amador break wall and cycle that to Flamenco Island. We're also going to see the Smithsonian uh, Reserve out there and the Bio Museum. Unfortunately those places are closed on Mondays and Tuesdays so good to note they're only open from Wednesday onwards. So keep that in mind when you're planning your trip here. So what we're doing instead is we're first heading down to the uh, seafood market. We're gonna go get some seafood here, local fresh seafood, and then we're gonna walk around a different break wall or at least a suspended walkway known as Cinta Costera, which goes around the Casco Viejo region here. And uh, then we'll do a little bit of exploring around the old part of town and 
we'll have our flight out to Brazil later on. to Sinta Costera behind us there, this, the big highway that's uh, suspended over the water. Just after lunchtime and it's about 30 degrees Celsius, so we're deciding that we're gonna just head back to Casco Viejo, right over there, and probably get some ice cream or a cold drink and just relax for a bit. It's way too hot and humid right now to walk along there. I'd highly recommend it if you had time in the morning to do that or if you had a bike because it would be nice and easy to go around, but uh, it's way too hot right now. Miranda's taken off. So behind me here you can see the Sinta Costera which we were going to actually go around before but it is way too hot. Much easier to just see the whole thing here from the Plaza Frances which we are at right now in uh, Casco Viejo. In the background there you can also see the Bridge of the Americas. That is officially where North and South America meet so it is crossing the Panama Canal. It connects the two continents together. We are currently on the northern side of the bridge, but guess what? We're actually in South America. The way that the peninsula actually curves around, it actually, you have to head south to go up into North America. I know it's a bit of a brain scratcher. We crossed into North America briefly yesterday when we uh, crossed over the uh, Puente Centenario which was the Centenary Bridge and we crossed over in the Calebra Cut and that spot there is actually the narrowest part of the Panama Canal and it was dug right through a large hill and the excavations from those hills were actually used to create the uh, breakwater wall all the way in the background there which is called the Armador and that was our original plan today was to actually cycle out along that but Everything is closed, as I mentioned before, on Mondays and Tuesdays. So that's it. That wraps up our time here in Panama. Absolutely lovely, beautiful city. We didn't get much time to explore the newer part of Panama City. That would be a whole new trip in itself if we had a couple of days or so. But this old area here, the Casco Viejo, is the most beautiful part of Panama. It is absolutely stunning. But you can see the beautiful buildings there in the background. So we're going to walk back to our hostel now, get ourselves ready and make our way to the airport so we can head to Manaus, the rainforest, the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Join us on our next adventure as we explore the world's largest rainforest, the Amazon in Brazil. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. And we'd love if you could leave us a comment, letting us know what you've enjoyed or what you'd like to see more of. And help us grow our channel, become part of the Global Travel Stories family by sharing with friends, family, or anyone you think would enjoy our content. Thanks guys.